Hello and good, good evening to everyone present. Welcome to today's event. On behalf of NSC SBH and ICOMOS India East Zone, I, Dr. Sukanya Mitra, welcome all of you to today's program on the occasion of World Heritage Day. We have two speakers today, both members of SBH as well as ICOMOS India East Zone. They will be speaking on Tireta Bazaar, the journey from obscurity to global recognition for Kolkata's oldest Chinatown. The first speaker today is Ms. Sohini Pine. She is a conservation architect trained in SPA Delhi. She was the one who worked to obtain the nomination status for Tireta Bazaar in the World Monuments Watch list. She's also a member of NSC SBH and ICOMOS India East Zone. So over to Ms. Pine. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, let me just share my presentation. Uh, so I'll begin. So um, I'll firstly start off with why this area, uh, why uh, the Chinese uh, so community may, uh, uh, if I may, uh, started uh, settling hello. Uh, in Kolkata. Uh, so the accelerated growth of Calcutta as a trading center under the British between the mid 18th and the mid 20th centuries saw the influx of a diverse group of trading communities not only from different parts of the Indian subcontinent, but also beyond. So there were the Armenians, uh, who are the pioneers of no, trade in Bengal. We cannot uh, there the were the Baghdadi the Jews, the, the Parsis. The screen is, uh, so the with the growth of Calcutta in the 18th, in the mid 18th and uh, mid 20th centuries, uh, this brought in a large, uh, a large uh, section of diverse communities, not only from the Indian subcontinent, but also elsewhere. So this included the Armenians, the Baghdadi Jews, the Parsis, uh, and also the Chinese who made their way to Calcutta. Uh, Calcutta, which was only a group of hamlets in, the six, in 1690, rapidly transformed into a cosmopolitan city with diverse ethno-religious communities who contributed a piece of their own identity to the city's heritage. Now, chiefly being uh, involved in trade, these communities came settled in the uh, historic bazaar of the city, which we now understand roughly as central Calcutta, including uh, Bara Bazaar, Bo Bazaar, Tirati Bazaar, etc. So, uh, in Tirata Bazaar, uh, we see the, uh, the the settlement of the Chinese community who came and set, uh, uh, settled in Calcutta. So, it's giving a, a backdrop of just giving a, a like a brief historical backdrop of the Chinese in Calcutta. In 1780, uh, we have the records of the first Chinese settler uh, near uh, Calcutta, uh, about uh, so south of Calcutta, uh, near Boj Boj. Uh, uh, we have Yong Achu, who was a tea trader, who came to uh, 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 Calcutta in 1780, and uh, Warren Hastings granted him about 650 bigas of land to establish a sugar plantation and a sugar mill in exchange for the tea that he brought with him from China. And uh, Achu uh, brought about 110 men with him and established this mill. However, within a, a couple of years, uh, uh, unfortunately, Achu passes away and uh, the mill uh, is also put up for auction soon. Uh, by then, by 1788 and uh, in, the com in the coming years, there are multiple uh, 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 there are multiple reports of uh, several uh, Chinese residents in Calcutta. Uh, for example, Colesworthy Grant in 1847 mentions about 25 Chinese shoemakers settled on Koshai Tola, now Benting Street. Uh, along with, uh, along with uh, uh, a similar number of carpenters who were engaged in the ship in the ship building activity. Uh, so, uh, by uh, 1839, uh, with the Opium Wars in China, we see another uh, wave of migration to Calcutta. And by the mid 19th, uh, by the mid 19th century, there's a full-fledged neighborhood of the uh, Calcutta Chinese in central Calcutta. Uh, Jawahar Sirkar writes, uh, the 20th, the the. Uh, this formed a distinctive Chinatown with traditional Chinese temples, dragon architecture, gaily painted signboards, and festivals in their bold and picturesque language, with the rustle of red silks and the aroma of Chinese food so temptingly around. Uh, by 1910, 
uh, with the growth of the uh, with the growth of the Calcutta Chinese community, uh, a large section of the population who were uh, engaged in the leather industry were relocated to uh, the fringes, the eastern fringes of Calcutta, uh, to Tangra, where a second Chinatown developed. But now we'll be sticking to the the Bazaar, uh, the Chirata Bazaar Chinatown. In 1930s and 1940s, we see again a renewed migration of the Chinese in Calcutta uh, due to the civic unrest due, uh, in, in China and due to the uh, uh, world, the Second World War and the Japanese invasion of uh, China during the time. So as you can see, in 1837, there were about 362 Chinese uh, 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 members in, in Calcutta, and the number increases to about uh, almost reaching 9,000 in uh, by this is this the, this map is, uh, shows the various uh, regions from China the from where the community migrated to Calcutta and uh, with uh, coming from different regions uh, the community also developed uh, occupational niches for example the Cantonese were skilled uh, where before they came uh, to Calcutta and they were skilled carpenters the Hakka on the other hand were unskilled and uh, they took on the uh, took on the business of uh, shoemaking and later uh, with with uh, and later in tanneries the hoopes were dentists and also uh, they the uh, a, a section of the population also engaged in paper flower making however this did not uh, the paper flower making did not continue uh, till uh, after the uh, after 1961 they also had other occupations with uh, that developed during 1940s, 50s uh, of restaurants, eateries, laundries, beauty salons, and sauce making units. Uh, this map shows um, shows Tirata Bazaar uh, in the heart of the city, and uh, Tangra, which de developed as the second Chinatown on the fringes of the city at that time. Uh, so if we had to delineate the site today, uh, this is what we would uh, say comprises of uh, old Chinatown in the bazaar. Uh, we have the Chitpur Road on one side, we have the Lushan Sarani uh, uh, sort of splicing across the middle of the uh, entire neighborhood. We have the Chhatawala Bhi, uh, we have Fears Lane, Blackburn Lane, uh, and the end uh, is Sunya 10th Street, and on the other side, uh, yeah, Fears Lane. And uh, within this uh, with area are uh, uh, dotting through this neighborhood are various uh, religious, social uh, of the Chinese. Along with this, you have some remnant, remnant uh, residential units. You also have uh, a lot of commercial units uh, which are still owned and operated by the Chinese community here. So uh, looking into tangible and intangible heritage, so when the China, uh, when the community came migrated from China, they uh, a lot of it was based on regionalism. So, so the different uh, regions that they came from uh, from the mainland, they formed small clans and uh, started uh, huiguans or native associations in Calcutta. So we have six different native association places or six different huiguans, which became. Uh, not only a religious, uh, not only a religious, but also included uh, a social gathering space. Uh, these Huiguans would also often have a symmetry associated with it, uh, or any structure associated with it. They would also have some sort of schools associated with it. So uh, let's just run through the six, uh, these six associations that we have today. The oldest is the Nam Namsoon Temple. Uh, in brackets, you'll see the, the Chinese names of uh, this. Whatever we are saying today is, of, of course, an anglicized form. So uh, first we have the Namsoon Temple uh, built in 1820. Uh, these are the interiors of the temple. We have uh, Chungi Tong built in 1858. We have the Siep Temple, uh, built, uh, which the, with the Hui Guan was formed in 1845, but the present premises was built in 1905. This is the interiors of the uh, CF temple with um, extremely intricate uh, woodwork uh, uh, throughout the uh, interiors. This is the roof of the CF temple. 
the next one is the Sevui Temple and Boiling Club, uh, which was built in 1908. On top of this, so the ground floor is uh, used as the temple and the club, while the uh, first floor is used by the Hupe Association. This is the, uh, again the interiors of the temple. Uh, then we have the Ji Heng Club. Uh, often you can see uh, you can see various me uh, members of the community coming and playing a game of mahjong in the uh, in the temple. Uh, the next is Tungon, which was the uh, with the the Uyghwan was established in 1864. But the pre present premises of the temple was built in 1924, uh, and the present premises was built for the Nanking restaurant, which is again one of the most uh, uh, popular Chinese uh, restaurants of the time. Along with the uh, religious and social institutions, we also have other structures. Uh, we have a funerary structure called the Arms House. Uh, we have uh, residential structures. We also have uh, various commercial establishments. Uh, just a few meters away on uh, Chitpur Road, we also have uh, uh, Chinese shoe stores. Uh, the, the, the heritage of the Calcutta Chinese is not limited to only the tangible. Uh, the, the, the community also still celebrates with uh, a lot of um, they are very active in celebrating their uh, Chinese New Year. There are various other celebrations like All Souls Day, which, uh, which takes place. Uh, these are various photographs of the uh, celebrations during the Chinese New Year uh, uh, in 2020. There's also a uh, breakfast market which is uh, very well known in Calcutta. Now the turning point for this community was the uh, the Indo-Chinese War of 1962, uh, where a large uh, section of the population were uh, taken to internment camps uh, in Deoli in Rajasthan, and uh, from then on, the population has declined uh, and is rapidly uh, declining even today. Uh, any organization with links with the, uh, the Chinese were shut down. The Chinese schools were shut down. Uh, many people were laid off jobs. There were issues of citizenship. Uh, there were poor scope of there was poor scope of employment. There was uh, poor business opportunities for the Chinese for the Calcutta Chinese. And, uh, this has caused uh, migration from Calcutta to uh, to uh, Canada, Europe, Australia, and parts of North America. The scenario today, um, with large-scale outmigration of the Calcutta Chinese, the population of these communities have dwindled to a minuscule percentage. Uh, this gap has been filled up by communities of today, uh, other communities who are either unaware of these heritage structures, uh, of these heritage resources, or attached very little or no relevance to these structures. The issue of conservation for, of these shared built heritage resources has taken a backseat in these uh, densely commercial uh, neighborhoods. And uh, due to which the structures are facing a threat of encroachment, abandonment, and dereliction. So this uh, led me to the question of who then, uh, who then takes ownership or takes responsibility for the conservation of these built heritage resources, who's, uh, who the, the chief stakeholders of whom are uh, dwindling uh, very, very rapidly. And who now takes ownership to ensure the conservation of these resources, especially the living heritage and uh, the less uh, the less famous but equally significant structures, which uh, which are not pr uh, protected uh, under the center of the state. Yeah, these are some photographs showing the present scenario. So you can see in red is the Tungon uh, temple and in yellow is the Siet uh, temple, which are completely engulfed by the uh, the, the various other uh, buildings surrounding the area. So what used to be a sort of mixed use, uh, low rise uh, settlement has turned into a very densely commercial uh, settlement with office buildings. And this has completely uh, this has completely disrupted the uh, human scale of the neighborhood and the and it has uh, disrupted the 
historicity of the neighborhood. Along with this, there is a lot of problems of waste disposal in front of the, right in front of the uh, temples. Uh, there's encroachment by squatters. There is uh, there is uh, there is a huge problem of on street parking right in front of the temples. Again, you can see waste disposal in front of the CF temple. And this uh, brings us to the need for revival of uh, of this uh, neighborhood. So Old Chinatown is a testimony of the cosmopolitan nature of Calcutta and the culturally pluralistic society that it housed between the 18th and 20th centuries. Today, Kolkata is the only city in India housing a historic Chinatown where the neighborhood has great historical, associational uh, and social cultural value. And amongst all the minority communities that had come and settled in this uh, in this area in central Calcutta, uh, we only the Chinese community of Calcutta retains their population uh, in a, a uh, in a, a significant number. And uh, the living the, the sites are all the temples are all living sites where we still see uh, uh, rituals and uh, uh, being performed, and the traditions are still uh, up, upheld and they are they are maintained even to the day. So, um, and also the architectural heritage of the neighborhood is very unique. It's not seen elsewhere uh, because it's a, it's a mix of uh, the local architecture layered with all the uh, layered with colonial, the prevalent colonial styles. For example, if you see uh, the Tungan temple, which was built for the Nanking restaurant, it's a neoclassical, it has a neoclassical facade. And, uh, but only when you come to the interiors of the temples, will you see in the ornamentation of the interiors and the iconography, will you see, will you understand that this is a, a, a sacred site of the Calcutta Chinese community? When you come inside, you have these uh, uh, very intricate woodwork uh, with uh, uh, showing various uh, figures of mythical, uh, uh, mythical mythical figures uh, there is there's uh, uh, ornamentation with uh, vegetation with flora fauna uh, and this this sort of uh, makes the the temple so distinct however when you see it from outside they are they are of a very humble scale are uh, not very grand not very grand and uh, overbearing structures and uh, they have this human scale to it and the it's it's very important to see how the uh, the local and the global have come together and uh, uh, forming a very uh, synthetic architectural styles. Um, so, it, so uh, being an indispensable part of Calcutta's heritage, uh, this is when uh, I, I decided that uh, then there needs to be some sort of action taken to uh, to ensure sustained conservation of this neighborhood. Uh, so in 2021, uh, the World Monument World Monuments Fund uh, uh, World Monuments Fund uh, uh, asked for applications for the World Monuments Watch, uh, which would be released in 2022. And this is when I submitted the nomination for uh, Chirata Bazaar Old Chinatown. So they were mainly looking at three things. One is the cultural significance of the neighborhood. Uh, the second is the urgency with which it needs to be protected. And the third is the feasibility of the project. So uh, with these three uh, criteria, uh, the it was no, it was nominated to the World Monuments uh, Watch in 2022. And these are some of the press coverage of the nomination of Chirata Bazaar to the World Monuments Watch. And uh, over the next two years, uh, World Monuments uh, Fund will be uh, assisting um, through financial aids and through um, technical expertise to ensure the conservation of this historic neighborhood, which is uh, which is so important for our city. Uh, yes, that's it. Uh, thank you. We'll go over to the next speaker. Thank you, Sohini. We will now move on to the second speaker. Ms. Komulika Bose. She's a conservation architect and has worked on several national and international projects and is the founder of Heritage Synergies. She's a member and former coordinator of NSC SBH. She's also a member of ISC SBH and is on the steering committee of ICOMOS India. She has been working in the Toretta Bazaar area for decades and is very familiar with the locality and its people. So over to Komulika. 
uh, apologies for this little bit of delay and tech issues that we are having. We are attempting to do a hybrid event after almost two years of the pandemic. So uh, it's it's a great pleasure to be able to do this World Heritage Program on Tirta Bazaar Chinatown from uh, site from Chinatown itself. And we are in uh, one of the most beautiful Chinese temples here called the Sea Ip. Uh, temple and we are streaming also being able to stream live and share with all of uh, you. Uh, after showing this presentation, I'll just share my screen. So what my presentation is going to focus on today is uh, to, to sort of chart this journey, this uh, which has been almost like a decade long journey, which has led to uh, what has been the initiatives and what has been the long decade long journey that has led to uh, Chinatown being recognized in Tirta Bazaar as an uh, endangered uh, uh, site by the World Monuments Watch. And how was it established as a significant uh, precinct, not only within Kolkata, but within the context of shared built heritage? And what have been the various initiatives uh, in the past that have led to uh, this sort of a recognition uh, from local, uh, from obscurity, people in Kolkata barely knew about the Tirata Bazaar Chinatown, to the sort of global recognition that Shohini's uh, nomination has been able to secure. Uh, I will also be talking in the context of um, the Chaha project, which I will introduce to you all in some time, for which is the principal conservation architect, and how that also had several initiatives that which which so sort of uh, to begin, of course, uh, Shoini has spoken about the, in, uh, the the location and the context of Kolkata Chinatown. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and talk about the wider context of the Grey Town, as it was known in uh, the mid uh, 19th century. Uh, Kolkata's Grey Town was really a buffer. It wasn't there were no physical boundaries, but it was a buffer between the European and the native waters and uh, therefore this was the zone where all the various international migrant communities who were coming to the second city of the empire to trade in where they uh, sort of set up their as well as their commercial trades around uh, the bazaar of uh, Kolkata. A short a video clip from the 1920s and 30s to just give you a flavor of what the bustling Chinatown of early 20th century Kolkata was like. It's Chinatown in Calcutta. Chinese laundries, shoe shops, tanneries, restaurants and many other businesses are crowded into this part of the city. In fact, the majority of Calcutta's Chinese live and work here. And there are some 30,000 of them. So in this context, we see that in, in the early and mid 20th century, we have about 30,000 Chinese, uh, Indian Chinese uh, living and working in Kolkata, calling Kolkata their home. And this was within the broader context of uh, the great town of Calcutta. And right from the early uh, 20, 19th century census records, we are able to see the presence of the Chinese in Kolkata. So about 362 uh, Chinese were noted in this area uh, in 1837, along with other ethnic mi uh, international migrants, such as the Portuguese, the French, the Armenians, and the Jewish. And these were the neighborhoods around Tirata, around Gobazar, around Kolutola, where they were settled as uh, their sort of first uh, native settlement uh, over here. Today, many Armenians, Greeks, or the nomenclature of street name, which continues to reinforce this ethnic diversity. And hence, Chinatown becomes even more important because though the community is down to barely 10% of what they used to be, they are still here. Their uh, neighborhoods, their settlement, their rich cultural heritage is very much being practiced as a living heritage, uh, as opposed to many of the other ethnic enclaves and quarters that were there living in close proximity in the Grey Town. And therefore, the ethnic character of this cosmopolitan zone is really what defines the cosmopolitan shared built heritage of Kolkata as a city itself. And it is really a collective 
sharing of these historic resources, which is so important uh, for the city going forward. Hence, it was automatic that the Chinese, when they settled here, uh, they did settle in this part as well, establishing their first formal settlement in close proximity to the other ethnic migrants living here. And these are just some uh, very, very interesting documentation of the Chinese in their heyday in the city. And Shoini spoke about the presence of schools in the neighborhood, uh, uh, a high degree of education and college education. And you can see the assimilation in the Calcutta culture that uh, the community really uh, partook in activities. As late as 1955, we are able to see uh, uh, the Chinese opera and a lot of schoolgirls gathered on the streets when there was a delegation that was visiting the city um, and, and all of them sort of partaking in city life, in recreational activities and you can see a very vibrant uh, daily culture. However, in the last sort of 50, 60 years, all of that has begun to change and uh, when I started working here as part of the CHAM project, uh, they were literally an invisible face, you know, we kind of knew about them, uh, we ate Chinese food, but we di didn't really know where they lived, who they were, we knew about Tangra, but we didn't really know about it at the bazaar. So one of the quests of my work here was really in search of uh, Chinapara, what is, which is a Chinese neighborhood. What is that character? What is, how do you really revalorize a lost identity? And why was this identity lost? Why did something that was so flourishing um, about less than 100 years ago suddenly in decline? What were the causes? And uh, these were the kind of newspaper reports that uh, were in the Calcutta papers. Uh, and, and why were they leaving for greener pastures? And like, uh, again, Choini mentioned, we cannot delink the 1962 Indochina war from, uh, from the misfortunes that the community has faced post-1962 and uh, had to en masse uh, migrate to places like Canada, to places uh, in UK, uh, Singapore, Australia, because of the, uh, of the incarceration and deter in internment that the community faced by being sent off to camps in Rajasthan for four years. Um, and, and this is uh, now the diaspora, the Calcutta Chinese diaspora in Toronto, they recently uh, they celebrated about, they commemorated about 50 years of this internment. So this has had a, a, been the key contributor, one of the key contributors in the decline of uh, the Tirata Bazaar Chinatown and the, 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 uh, the fortunes of the Calcutta Chinese in general. And therefore, when the Char project was um, conceived in, uh, 20, in, in 2012, 2013, the idea was really to look at transforming Chinatown into an economically vibrant, clean, sustainable arts and heritage based food hub for the city with its own unique identity, where eventually we would also maybe, I mean, tourists would come, but to do something for the people of Chinatown, the community of Chinatown and the, the city of Kolkata uh, by and large. But the biggest challenge, which uh, very succinctly put in by the founder of the Char project, uh, the brain behind the Char project, uh, which was part of a Singapore based uh, consortium along with Intact Kolkata in partnership so uh, Rinku Bhomi, the biggest challenge we thought was the Char project faces was the kind of heart-wrenching poverty and the kind of um, urban sprawl and the change, the urban renewal that has taken place in uh, Chinatown itself. So how do you all be inclusive, talk about uh, livelihoods, healthcare, sanitation, amenities, shelter, uh, education, and not only about preserving and pickling some uh, buildings that belong to the Chinese community, but alienating the rest of the stakeholders who live and work in this part of the city. Because at the end of the day, you cannot reverse the change so easily. And so th th this was really an ambitious and also sort of an idealistic way of approaching the, the project. And as you can see, it was a very wide a uh, team where I was the conservation architect, but there were many others like anthropologists, sociologists, economists, lawyers, uh, um, real estate developers. There were many minds uh, that were uh, playing their role in putting their best brains together to really come up with 
um, a, a sustainable, inclusive, and adaptable model uh, for, for urban conservation in the city through Kolkata Chinatown. The, the main idea was really sustainable regeneration based on fiscal interventions, economic vitality, and social um, inclusion. Because without all of these being a well sort of integrated uh, network, uh, only one thing would not work. And these really started out as first as idea workshops, bringing the community on board. And this is all about 10 years now. Uh, 2012, 2013 is when all of this started in partnership with uh, Intact and um, iLeads. And you can see the community of uh, Chinatown was very, very actively involved in voicing their concerns, their aspirations, their hopes and dreams for uh, Kolkata Chinatown. And therefore, I mean, that's when I came into the picture and we did a very detailed study and survey uh, with students of SEP University in Ahmedabad and uh, Aru School of Architecture in Denmark as a participat participatory field study and survey of uh, Chinese owned health and um, assets, cultural assets in Chinatown, as well as the entire urban precinct itself. And uh, the, the, the community completely sort of joined in in this effort. We were here for about three weeks in May, which is the peak of Calcutta uh, summer uh, on the streets of Calcutta. And the way we worked with the community and the community opened their arms to help us, uh, that really was the first seed of this process and why that became important is as you can see the intensive development and change that has taken part in the urban fabric several sealed and abandoned buildings right from the 1962 uh, post-war period when they lost their trade license and uh, properties which has really led to what the state of even one of the most showcased streets uh, which is blackburn lane it was uh, just about 10 years ago. And from there, therefore, was this whole endeavor to map Kolkata's old Chinatown, which had never been done. The, how can we make a community feel proud of what they have if they even know what they have? And, and hence, uh, through these kind of participatory workshops and discussions with the students and the community hand in hand, this is the kind of map that they were working with. They had no idea what the boundaries of Chinatown were. They had no idea where, you, where, where it began, where it ended, where the key sort of uh, uh, spaces and precincts uh, were. And therefore, through a very, very thorough documentation and uh, survey of every building, every street, uh, of this precinct, uh, we were really able to first put together uh, a map and a, for Chinatown, uh, identifying where its boundaries lay, what were the various kinds of uses that were taking place, and within that, what were as individual property surveys, uh, what, what were all the various uh, kinds of buildings that were still in use by the Chinese community, and what were the various intangible and tangible assets that the community still held and lived in. And that's when we realized that it's extremely amorphous, it's extremely loosely packed, and the complete takeover and urban renewal that has set in post the, the Indochina war in the early 70s as, uh, as by, by literally cutting across Chinatown in two, which has really divided the neighborhood. And therefore, with this sort of uh, a situation, which is all that is in red is literally what is left of the fabric. Uh, how do you now plan? How do you go forward? And what do you do with this sort of uh, loosely packed amorphous uh, settlement? And this was the report which I then I developed. It was a precinct-wise, street-wise uh, mapping of significance of assets which are there, change that has taken place, which was then followed up with uh, a building by building uh, survey and architectural documentation, which was then uh, cohesively put together and submitted as a dossier, uh, looking at streetscapes. This was the condition about in 2014. It was an un, it, it was an undesignated precinct. It still is. Uh, so putting this together as a dossier uh, to the state government of West Bengal, to the Department of Tourism, to as part of the CHA project, to really do something concrete and make certain plans um, action. 
And of course, that is along with the streets, we also documented all the temples, the sh social clubs that Shoini spoke about, the, the living heritage and the daily activities which uh, take place over there. Each of these, then this is an old sort of membership. So there's, it's a very active and a fulfilling life this here, despite of the, uh, the urban decline that the place has seen over the years. Uh, the six temples were documented thoroughly in order to uh, start off restoration processes for them slowly as funding is made available. Uh, this documentation also did not exist earlier. So now there, there, there has been for some time a very thorough documentation of the six temples, other funerary monuments and institutions such as this arms house um which was also not documented and now th there are talks of some sort of adaptive views of this as well along with uh, the the cemeteries and the burial practices which are linked to each of these uh, six uh, different communities and six different uh, temples and sub cultures within the, the, the Calcutta Chinese itself. So we did really a, a complete and thorough documentation of what Calcutta's Chinese ethnic ident cultural identity and heritage was all about. The other important layer for us to document was the occupational vitality and the economic identity of the community who are extremely, um, um, extremely enterprising. And within Chinatown, we then mapped the various businesses and traditional uh, trades that continue to exist um, over here, such as the beauty parlors, the sauce shops, the dentists, the doctors, the dry cleaners, the for the carpentry, the carpentry workshops and furnishers, photo studios, restaurants, and shoe stores. So the idea was that though it may be a pale shadow of itself today but they all remain. And if they all remain, which means the knowledge and the wisdom still remains in the community, and how do you tap into this and how do you bring about a, a change uh, in their livelihoods as well? So these were some of the very uh, detailed documentations that we did of every temple, every building of significance in, uh, in the city. This would be pretty much taken over all the temples and made them into our studios and uh, we were here all day so much so that the community was like cooking breakfast for us and they really took us in as their family uh, members and by the time we finished with the documentation so we would come here start the day have a nice good home cooked meal and start our day and be here on site till late in the evening it was really like a family and it was so heart touching and heart tending to be accepted like this and welcomed like this by um, each one of the community members and that then it really became important to give back and the entire documentation that we did we uh, published it through some funding that we got from the school in Denmark to not only have this be a uh, rust uh, be, be in college libraries and as a report submitted to the government but something that can be shared and distributed with the community itself so we published these books gave it the sort of identity and branding called china para which is called it which is what the neighborhood is known as also now today so that's a small accomplishment and since then the char project has uh done many, many different kinds of initiatives, different kinds of brought in different kinds of teams uh, addressing waste management, addressing poverty of alleviation, of use, and, um, and also on very intensive stakeholder surveys with the residents and the communities with uh, with the diaspora who now lives abroad, with the government, and not agency to really understand how can we make this neighborhood better? How can we make it more inclusive? And this is when we then took on like a, a design exercise to see that if we're talking about inclusive, sustainable change, what is that nature of change? So there were these kind of scenographies that we were doing for a, a breakfast uh, and food hub along Chatawala Gali, uh, a, a very sort of uh, sensitive change uh, without uh, Im impacting negatively the characteristic of these buildings, which are again unlisted. And how do you really bring in some character 
and now sort of you know uh, six seven ten years later we begin we began to see the change from 2018 actually when the community became enthused became started mobilizing themselves and we we are able to in small steps see through self organization through self mobilization uh, many many changes that have uh, which are positive changes and this building which was really in a derelict and decrepit state through our sort of proposals and ideations was eventually in 2017 converted into um, uh, as an adaptive reuse project into a, a, a functional restaurant called the Sivui uh, by one of the presidents of uh, uh, the club and temple over here and since then the mobilization of the community has seeded uh, heritage walks uh, which are popular now across chinatown uh, the dragon boat festival which had never been celebrated uh, till then in the city but that's sort of that's where the community of chandra tangra of um, uh, Trieta bazaar comes uh, comes out and celebrates like a carnival in 2017 when the icomos ga the general assembly took place in delhi we did a one week tour of shared built heritage in bengal and uh, that's where as part of the group we also brought the members of the international scientific committee of shared built heritage to chinatown among other sites in kolkata and it has been a sustained sort of small actions and small initiatives which have led to a greater awareness both by the citizens and the young uh, citizens of youth of kolkata along with uh, national and international awareness which has uh, come about by, by different stakeholders by different actors and primarily by the community itself because a revived community is really the most important er imperative for conservation and hence when today uh, almost 10 years later with this this um, this uh, status has been achieved uh, we must still remember that the status is to establish its significance as an endangered site it is extremely threatened even today and therefore the clarion call to preserve the diversity of kolkata's chinatown and india's heritage thank you so thank you komulika for the for your wonderful presentation so we will now take questions and comments both shomini and uh, komulika you can address them to either of them and uh, they will answer while you're waiting for questions i'd also just like to share the screen turn the screen around to show that this being a hybrid event we have so many members from the community and icomos members who are present here today they've all joined us on the occasion of world heritage day and that's really special for us So, yeah. So now that uh, it's on the site, there will be three major things that uh, World, World Monuments Fund is looking at. Uh, one is awareness and outreach. Uh, second is uh, to to add like advocacy to for the urban uh, renewal of this entire neighborhood. Uh, waste there's waste being dumped right in front of the temple uh, temples and uh, this is one thing that they would get ad like advocate to get removed and uh, lastly of course the uh, restoration of the temples so these are the three major things that are uh, on the uh, list Uh, are there any plans to create a museum? Not as of now, but of course, uh, this was announced only in March, and uh, the plans for uh, World Monument Fund will be chalked out in the next uh, couple of months, which will be uh, which will be completed in the next two years. So uh, all the plans are not completely chalked out as of now. 
and uh, of course if there are any plans to create a museum uh, that that would be a great uh, that clip will you do it how will you how will you do this exactly so from world monuments fund they are trying to add like they are, they are doing advocacy uh, because this can be done only by the uh, calcutta improvement trust so they are speaking to the calcutta improvement trust and uh, all other details will be shared shortly this is of course for the removal of the garbage compactor right in front of this has been a uh, this is bonani it's a wonderful presentation thank you for looking into this area it's been neglected for such a long time nanking was one of the most famous restaurants people would come from bombay and chinese overseas chinese would also come there there's one person in government uh, when he was the commissioner of calcutta corporation who took a lot of uh, interest because dominique said uh, at that time that uh, the Nanking uh, restaurant was uh, changing hands and somebody was buying it to tear it down. So Alapon Bonnapadhyay himself came to the site. And then we talked about it. He said, how is this dump yard possible? How can people live here? How can we have? I said, this is your city, you clean it up. So I think more than KIT, because now that's part of KMDA, they're very slow, very lethargic. You should get Calcutta Municipal Corporation and Firad Hakim involved in this because it's a minority community and they need the protection. One other uh, small suggestion, uh, the Chinese here, they've lived there here for a long time, but the ones who came later on from Shillong and other places, uh, there was by the time they settled in, the high rises had started and there was no space in the old Chinatown. So they went to Tangra. I hope there's a way of bridging the two communities. They shouldn't feel them and us. Can I, uh, Kamalika, can I answer that? Yeah, sure. Rinku, are you there? <clears throat> Sorry, I joined a little late. Um, <clears throat> thanks to Tansen who kind of <laughs> pushed me into this. I, I, uh, but um, uh, I'll give a quick update on uh, the government's involvement right now. Um, we've got um, the current uh, commissioner uh, seemed like uh, seemed very open to the idea of uh, uh, of a revival, and we had a um, Mr. Kapoor and I had a very good uh, conversation with him. We he's um, he's put a joint secretary no, uh, yes uh, in charge of. Uh, this do you are you all uh, aware of Mr. Kaur Debashish Kaur? He is now in charge of uh, taking this forward. So fingers crossed. Let's hope we've we've also given him the idea. You know we've uh, given a plan for um, a compactor and a multi-function um, thing in uh, in that uh, uh, empty plot of land next to um, Toe Dimensions. So that's something we are trying to push so that the compactor can be moved from where it is. It's just been plonked in front of um, um, Tungan. Uh, so that's that's something we are trying to push. Uh, let's see, fingers crossed. Uh, and what else? There was another thing. Oh, and Char Project is also working on Dunia, which is a you know low cost housing solution for uh, the, the informal settlers there, which is, which I think would go a long way in, you know, changing the, the, the scene of complete, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the dirt, the filth, the, uh, the poverty that you see, the in your face poverty. Uh, hopefully we can do something about it. What we want to do is we want to involve the local instead of eviction, which we don't want. Um, uh, you know, when you talk usually for urban, renewal projects, the biggest downside is that, you know, it comes with eviction. Uh, apparently right now, 500 people in India, in Delhi, I think 500 people are being evicted every day because of um, uh, urban renewal projects. So that was something we were very uh, specific about that no eviction and therefore Dunya, it's there on the Char Project's website, I think a little bit, but uh, that's something we are progressing quite fast on. So hopefully we can involve 
the the residents the people in the jhukis themselves in the renewal process so yeah that's my little update I, second part to that i asked if the chinese living in tangra they should yes. feel that they're outsiders i know they come from different parts of china but they too it's a joint heritage and they should be out because a large number of them live there isolated from uh, territory bazaar absolutely banani you're absolutely right so we have in our project report we also have a big focus on um the future of tangra what can you know we've got given vision uh, vision report on what uh, what we can do with tangra so i think there will be like once this dunia thing takes shape uh, it is something that could um, benefit both both uh, uh, tirete as well as tangra so we'll see how it works out but uh, i think uh, baby steps it's been so long you know how it is two steps forward and three steps back so uh, think but for tangra you have to move quick very quickly because yes yes oh. state people have their eyes there absolutely know the, that community really well yeah at night if there's an elderly couple uh, in the house a mm -hmm. huge brick shatters the window and then a, a week or 10 days later they pack up and they leave so that's a land grab it's a different way of doing land grab so a lot of tension in tangra so you have to yes um, and you know just gated communities everywhere they just popping up every day so uh, it is it is a matter of grave concern and uh, hopefully with everyone i mean we are just really a drop in the ocean so when you know with everybody coming in um, we hope to move forward. the work you are doing is so wonderful i'm so happy you're doing it thank you thank you thank you to rinku and bonani um, if i can just jump in to now uh, take some of the questions in the chat box i think there are quite a few questions on uh, yeah what is the role what is the status currently is it protected not protected what is the role of the municipal government uh, etc so uh, yes yeah, so, so kolkata just to clarify does not uh, have any provisions for uh, listing heritage precincts or conservation areas or districts and hence uh, we are, it's a very difficult situation when we talk about uh the the urban ensemble of chinatown uh it, the six chinese temples that exist here are grade one listed buildings however uh over the years many of them are also now deteriorating they're not in the sort of robust condition that they were in few years ago and very shortly there will be additional funding and expertise which may be required um for these temples um, as well but other than that there's uh, no real provision or real incentives in place that uh, dissuades anyone for either bringing about an irreversible change or uh, demolishing a, a building and replacing it with something that's completely uh, out of sync in the neighborhood much of which as uh, the documentation showed has already taken place so the challenge really is is of the percentage that exists how do we still save and ret retain what exists uh, uh, rather than sort of uh, you know lament the fact that so much is lost uh, there was another question on whether there have been interviews conducted uh, and cultural mapping of the residents and users so of course the residents and users are very proud of the heritage that uh, this neighborhood contains but along with the residents of the chinese residents uh, of this area there are also various uh, there's a large office going community surrounding the temples and uh, as part of my thesis during my masters i had also conducted an uh, conducted interviews to see what their uh, connection with the heritage is and it was very sad to see that they have like very little or almost no relevance uh, uh, with these structures because they don't they don't understand the significance of these structures and i think that is also very important uh, uh, to know because uh, this is a building with uh, largely who largely uh, in the you know above 50 bracket so it really rests on our shoulders the communities of today who are sort of uh, working in these areas uh, to to take the responsibility to safeguard this heritage and uh, 
while we are while we are doing all our conservation initiatives we should also look at uh, creating that awareness creating that sensitivity to uh, amongst the community uh, which is working in this area uh, living in this area who do not belong to the chinese community but are but are uh, they're in contact with this with these heritage buildings almost every day without understanding their value or their significance so i think uh, we need to do a lot of major work in that uh, area also um another quick point well in what we sorry are aware i think there's a question by tansin but uh, no over the years over the years the chinese community has actively reached out uh, to the consulate the consulate has been quite proactive in uh, helping them in various uh, initiatives and uh, that's definitely um, that's definitely um, a channel which is open but what is i think what is still missing in my opinion even today is this sort of of uh, apathy from uh, the 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 city itself uh, from from the broader uh, city and as, as well as uh, other agencies local bodies etc because of their sort of minority status they don't really exert the kind of pressure that can bring about a a, a holistic kind of a change and even today there is so much uh, uh, there is so much of an othering because of the kind of identity that they have that any kind any time there is any kind of a turmoil that takes place um across borders or you know at the national or international front that there, there is a backlash that does take place for this community even today and that is the sad uh, part that despite being 7 6 7 8 generation uh, calcuttans uh, there is still um, uh, an, an issue that and, and uh, a, a lack of sensitivity that the citizens of um calcutta show towards uh, the calcutta chinese okay uh, i also wanted to wanted to ask is uh, mr chen there in uh, in ca today yes he, he is he is i was just going to tell him that he should say something <laughs> yes because not, not only should he say uh, speak about what he is doing but also the concern that we have about certain buildings that are currently in the process of you know with with owners are talking about there are owners who yes, are yes, mr chen is here and we are requesting him so even as we speak there are certain buildings that are you know there is some kind of takeover takeovers happening so if you could just address that yeah No, no, that's very true. Because even like today, I'm coming here after uh, a while. I mean, all of lockdown, uh, and it's see a temple where we are right now used to be visible from the main road, and today it's just hidden. It's completely taken over by temples, by other kinds of things, and you can't find the temple anymore from from the street. So definitely, things are very, very rapidly changing. So, uh, Mr. Chen, please. Good evening, yes. madam. Good evening. Good evening. um first of course we should all thank you for you know being one of the first people to uh, to set an example of uh, adaptive reuse in uh, chinatown and uh, if you can just tell people that how there are you know takeovers happening and there could be some temples that could face demolition and therefore we all need to you know sort of uh, get behind this and do something about it can you just tell is there something that you can tell us about thank you madam welcome okay, most welcome and uh, actually a lot of thing uh, going to be happen we are lack of support uh, and lack of fund so we are very disabled so i i am just trying my level best to uh, uh, try to save the thing so we need uh, we need support yes yes mr chen You got me, madam. Yes, now I can hear you. But I have because I have I have distance. I was I have distance uh, with you a couple of days. Yes, 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 and so it is really a matter of concern, and uh, you know, with so much support, I'm sure we can do something about it. One of the things is uh, show me uh, if we can. Um, what about the status of uh, this heritage uh, watch status? Can that 
can that uh, sort of dissuade people from in any way can it doesn't have any legal standing does it but can it stop people from um, say trust uh, trustees of a temple from selling it to uh, to promoters we can hear you no it doesn't have a legal status uh, it it does not have a legal status uh, we cannot stop uh, they cannot world monuments fund and the uh, nomination to the world monuments watch cannot stop uh, the buildings from being uh, taken over or being uh, uh, yes it, it 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 doesn't give any statutory status to the uh, buildings uh, what uh, what is uh, so what the watch does is uh, one firstly is advocacy and secondly is uh, providing financial aid and te technical expertise so it doesn't have any legal backing to say that uh, these buildings cannot be demolished or these buildings cannot be uh, uh, used in, uh, in in any other way but can uh, can the heritage um, say an in, uh, an organization like of course, intact doesn't have it, but the heritage, uh, what's it called? The Kolkata heritage, is there a, you know, the, which is the organization that grants heritage status? Uh, is it KMD, uh, KMC? Also, yes, so it's KMC. KMC so, has a heritage uh, cell uh, which yeah. grants heritage status. So could we, if what if we uh, give what whatever grade A or whatever to this, does that mean that it can... Uh, it's kind of That's already. It is already grade A, right? For example, the six temples are already graded, but okay. uh, for, if, a, if a structure is not graded as of now, then yeah. the process to get it graded uh, will, will take a long a long period of time. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Besides the it can only protect, protect the structures that are already graded. Okay, okay. Uh, besides so it is only it is It is only if, um, yeah, only by you know people coming in it's like you know the media and that sort of a thing right there's no other way no other legal uh, way we have right besides the the heritage committee of kmc yeah there's a state heritage commission and okay. they are quite powerful okay 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 so you can approach them okay okay Hmm. Hello. Thank you Hello. for this wonderful dialogue. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? This is Ananya Bhattacharya. I'm the, hi. I am the zonal representative of ICOMOS India for those uh, who do not know me. And it was a wonderful dialogue today. And, uh, you know, this is not the first one. We have been talking of this in the past two years because sustainable and resilient development of heritage areas and precincts is one of the agendas we have it's a indeed this is one of the most formidable tasks here in particular this site i mean it's really a challenge but thank you for all the wonderful suggestions you've given in the chat and uh, i'll request you all to write your email ids in chat if you want to remain updated on what is happening and we will be in touch and uh, we need to end here in the interest of time but thank you for joining us so I'd first like to thank Shohini and Kamalika for their initiative, you know, to get this highlighted on the important day of International Day of Monuments and Sites. So thank you, Shohini Pine and Kamalika Bose. I thank Shukana, uh, who is heading the NSC Shared Built Heritage, for coming forward with support and assistance. I thank Karan, our executive assistant, for all the background work he has done. Biggest thanks to Mr. Chen for letting us use this premises. And this has really created a difference because, you know, if it is online, we are all talking. But today we are here with the community and hopefully, though you will miss it, those who are, those of you who are joining online, you will miss maybe the chat will have over our cup of tea. But this is also extremely important. And I'm sure this is not the last time we are talking. So a big thanks to all the members of ICOMOS India and all the members of the NSC of Shared Built Heritage and the community members who are present here today. Thank you very much. And uh, all others who are joining from uh, various countries. I can see International Scientific Committee members. So thank you. And we have noted your suggestions. And we will be pursuing all this. And we'll keep you updated. 
And uh, please write your email IDs in the chat so that we have the contacts. And with that, uh, I'll end today. Thank you. And may heritage continue to be alive. Thank you.